Welcome to Scotts Bluff National Monument. I'm Chief Ranger Justin Quetzel. Hope you get to enjoy the natural beauty of this special place and also its history here in western Nebraska. Please, while you're here, keep safety in mind and also care for these special resources. Welcome to Scotts Bluff National Monument. Over the last two years, we've had a lot of changes here at the park. In December of 2019, we closed the visitor center in preparation for renovation and an addition that was put on. We also have brand new exhibits. And today in July, we are open. We have new exhibits. We have a new visitor center, 2,600 square feet. Uh, we have a new park store, and we're excited about all this. All right, so welcome to the newly renovated Scotts Bluff National Monument Visitor Center. Why don't we go have a look around and see what new exhibits we have in store in the new Visitor Center. So this is our brand new theater. No longer do you have to sit in among some exhibits to watch our park movie. And on demand, we show our park movie, Scotts Bluff, Landmark for the Ages. So this is our Call of the River exhibit room right here. And what's nice about a lot of these exhibits in the newly remodeled visitor center is a lot of them are very tactile, very interactive. So just around the corner, for example, we have an exhibit about fur trade, the fur trade in the area. And we've got an exhibit where you can uh, try your luck at making a fair trade. So this door is the way that people used to enter our visitor center. And our front desk was right about where I'm standing here. So things would get really congested in this area. We've replaced that entrance with a new one. And in its place, we have this 3D map of the Scott Bluff and South Bluff. So this is our a time of change exhibit room. And we've got a couple interactive exhibits in here. In fact, uh, one of the things that's kind of fun to do is you can actually write a letter and put it in one of these mochias to send via the Pony Express. So here you can see just how much of the space our new exhibits utilize instead of this, the old exhibits which were kind of small, didn't really utilize all the space that we have in the visitor center. Also notice the colors. We have a lot of nice vibrant colors for, uh, to draw people's attention to our exhibits. So this is our new park store. It's ran by Black Hills Parks and Forest Association. Uh, currently we're adding new items weekly and we also have a much larger sales space than what we did before. We invite you to check out the new exhibits in our renovated visitor center. The visitor center is open daily during the summer from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Being an overlander on the Oregon Trail was not an easy thing to do. It was like camping 24 hours a day for six months out of the year. You started from Independence, Missouri, usually uh, Council Bluffs, Iowa, and you would walk 12 to 15, sometimes 20 miles a day for six months, and hopefully you'd get to your destination before six months. There were many hazards along the way. Firearm accidents were pretty common. Uh, children would sometimes fall under the wagon or get trampled by the oxen or sometimes just wander off and you couldn't halt the whole train to go look for those children. So mothers were heartbroken when they had to leave their young ones behind that they didn't know where they were. Cholera in 1849 and 1850 was a big problem. People at that time did not realize drinking contaminated water could make you sick and so they would bathe in the water, the oxen would bathe there, they would defecate there. It was contaminated water in this part of the world. Most of them went to find a better life. Economic conditions back east in the early 1800s were not good, banks were failing, people were losing their job, and they could go out and get 320 acres for husband and wife if you would make improvements upon the land in Oregon and California. So that was a big draw for people. The Mormons went to Salt Lake for religious reasons. They had been persecuted in various places where they had lived and were looking for their own place, which they did very successfully. But the big draw after 1849 was gold. People wanted to go get rich quick out in the gold fields of California, and as it ended up, very few of them actually did.
Here at Scotts Bluff National Monument, you can experience our wagons and the living history here we have at the monument, as well as enjoy the scenery that the pioneers would have experienced, such as Mitchell Pass right here behind me between Eagle Rock and Sentinel Rock. Mitchell Pass was a location where hundreds of thousands of immigrants traveled through to Oregon, California, and Utah. It's also the same location where the Pony Express rode through from 1860 to 1861. The first documented account occurred in 1834 with a group led by Nathaniel Wyeth. And they reported that the pass was so narrow that they had to go over six to eight foot mounds with their horses. And in some spots, they actually had to get on their knees and ride on the saddles to get through the pass. Later in 1850, a US Army captain found that someone had improved the pass and wagons had gone through. In 1851, all the wagon traffic began to shift to Mitchell Pass as it was a much faster route to get back to the North Platte River. On either side of Eagle Rock and Sentinel Rock, there were thousands of signatures by pioneers documenting their travel through. In the 1930s, a group of men working with the CCC went around the entire base of the bluff searching for the signatures. And at that time, there were only two. In the 1860s, the U.S. Army established a fort on the other side of the pass, first known as Camp Shumway and later known as Camp Mitchell. This then became the namesake for the pass, Mitchell Pass. Today you can hike on the very roadbed all the wagons traveled on and look out through the prairie and see where the wagon traffic went back down to the river. So here at Scotts Bluff National Monument, we welcome you uh, with open arms. We, we have the Oregon Trail that you can walk. We have other uh, hiking trails you can come and enjoy. We also have some great views. And if you are an evening person, we have some great sunsets here at Scotts Bluff National Monument. We love to see you come. Please make plans to come and see us soon. This is Volunteer Ranger Doug, Scotts Bluff National Monument National Park Service. I want to thank you for watching this video and for coming to Scotts Bluff National Monument.